Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining. Welcome to Foxit eScience webinar. Today, I'll show you guys how to upload your own forms and send that up for signing very easy and also legally binding. Awesome. So every time we log into Foxit eSign, we'll start at the home tab here. Right down below that, we have four different document status that we can follow up on. We have waiting for your signature, waiting for others to sign, the draft and completed documents. Right down below that, we have two sections. We have this big, large one here on the top to create a document. And here on the bottom left hand side to create a reusable template. So the differences between these two is that if you upload your document here on the top section, this is when you want to send something unique. It's a one time use document. And typically, you're not going to resend that again, unlike the templates here. So these are for your standardized form that you will be sending out over and over again. The only thing that would change is the recipient and the data collected. In that case, it will be considered a template. As you can see, set up once and send multiple times. We can also automate these templates here by creating a URL link out of the templates or also embedding them into your website if you have one with our online form feature. Here at the bottom, we have our help and support. Here you can make a ticket if you need to. We also have knowledge space if you're looking for, uh, for something specific, as well as our help videos. Uh, it has every major feature we have. These are very uh, useful. And here at the bottom right-hand side, we have our chat support. This is human-based. It's 24-7. So we are able to assist you at any time. Great. So let's go ahead and start by uploading one of our um, um, PDF and make that into a template so we can send it out for signing over and over again. So we have three different ways of doing that. I can go ahead and drag and drop my form here. I can upload it from my PC, or I can upload from Dropbox or Google Drive, for example. I'm going to upload from my computer. I'll go ahead and choose my file. And it will load in seconds. So as you can see, we are on the template creation page. This is our form. We just simply need to drag and drop some fields on top of it and send it for signing. As you can see here on the top left, we have our Foxit eSign logo with our Foxit eSign Pro plan and our enterprise plan. You do have custom branding, so you can put your own logo here on all email notifications, web forms, and documents received. So the first step is to see how many parties we need to sign and fill out fields on this template here every time. So as you can see, we have the recipient parties on the right-hand side, and we can send this form to as many signers as we need and no additional charge by clicking party row. If you do add too many, you can click the X on the top right to remove them. Great, so here on the section, we have two different type of parties. We have a blank row, which is this party row here. And we also have what's called a static party. So a common blank row is your customer, your patient, your employee. It all depends on your workflow. This is a blank row because your recipient is always a different one all the time. That's why we call this a blank row, unlike the static party. So if I click me here, this is going to add myself as a static party or yourself in your case, as you can see, it already has all my details, first name, last name, and email. So here we have two different parties on this template. One, it's a blank row. That means it's a different person every time. And here we have myself as a static party, because let's say I need to countersign this document every time it goes out. Here, by clicking others, you can add a additional static party, somebody you haven't sent this to before. You click others, and you can add somebody from your organization as a static party. Great, here on the left-hand side, we have our toolbox. So the first section we have here is signature fields, which are pre-populated fields and where you will capture signatures and initials. The second section we have is data entry fields that requires input from a signer. And the third section we have is advanced fields. These allow you to add secured fields for any sensitive information, such as social security or bank information, for example. We also have attachment fields for uploading files and photos, as well as seals um, by using an image field here as well. 
Great, so let's go ahead and prepare our uh, template so we can send that out for signing. So the first step is to make sure we uh, let our software know who is going to be responsible for each field. So here, if I click on the static party, everything on the left-hand side will turn green. And if I click on the uh, blank row, the customer, everything will turn blue on the left-hand side. So let's go ahead and uh, start by dragging and dropping something for their name. So let's say I need their name here. I'll go ahead and drag and drop this signer name field. Very easy on top of my form. And I can go ahead and resize the field here on the bottom right hand corner with the arrow. By using the signer name field, it is going to pre-populate your recipient's name so they don't have to type it or you don't have to type it. So let's go ahead and move over to the date. I'm going to go ahead and use this date field here on the second section. And this is a drop down list of dates they can choose from or type. I'll go ahead and resize it here at the bottom right arrow. Now, if I click on a field that's on my form, it's going to take me into field properties here at the right hand side. And here I can customize a specific field. For example, if I click on this one, I can mark it mandatory. As you can see, it will create this red outlining outside of the field. And any field could be marked mandatory. This will not let your recipient, your signer finish or execute the document before having all of your mandatory fields for that before. I'm also going to name this field here on the name. It does is optional. However, we do recommend our users to name in their fields. And I'll go ahead and show you why in a second. Just go ahead and simply name this contract start date. Great. So let's go ahead and move over to the checkbox. I'll go ahead and have one for yes and another one for no. I'm going to use checkbox field. So simply drag and drop and resize it. So I'm going to click on this field again. It will take me to field properties and I'm going to name this checkbox. Yes, include services, for example. And I'm also going to group the checkboxes together so they belong in the same group by just naming it the same. I'm going to name the group include services and I'm also going to mark the group mandatory. Again, as you can see, it will create that red outlining. I can, of course, drag and drop another checkbox field for the no, but I can easily right click copy on this one and paste that same field here. As you can see, it already has all the details from the previous box. I just need to change this yes into a no. So we have a yes checkbox. We also have a no checkbox. They belong in the same group because I named it the same. And only one of them could be allowed to be checked in this group. But of course, you can have multiple if you need to by selecting this option here, and it is mandatory. So with these settings here, they can only select either yes or no. Great, so let's go ahead and move over to the comments. I'm going to go ahead and use this text field here on the second section. If you do have a larger section, you can do a text box as well. Great, so I'm going to click on this field. Again, I'm going to mark it mandatory, and I'm also going to name it uh, service details. Also, keep in mind that you only have to do this work once on your template. So once we finish this work here, we can save it, and all the work will be already there. So we can send it again. We can click, click, and send it to our next recipient very easy. Great, so let's go ahead and move over to the signature field where they need to sign. So I'll go ahead and do signature field. Resize it so it can fit my form. We also have initials field. And let's go ahead and do a date sign here. So up here on this one, we did a date field, which is a drop down list of dates you can choose for more type. And this one here at the bottom, I'm going to do a date sign. And by using this one, it's going to pre-populate the date they sign. For example, if we send them something on Monday and they sign on Friday, it will have Friday's date here pre-populated. Great, so we have finished our recipients portion. In this case, uh, we're only going to have one party. So I'm going to delete this one for now so we can see how the recipient will see this once they get it. Great, so we have prepared our template. 
and let's go ahead and click save here on the top right so we don't we don't lose any other work awesome we can change the template name here on the top left if we need to Great, and let's say this is ready for sending. So if this is ready for sending, we are going to click send on the top right. And this is going to take us to three basic steps. So the first step is the overview. Um, here you can add more templates. Um, templates you guys have already created before. If you don't need to add another template within this send, we can just go ahead and click next. Second step is where you add your recipients. So as you can see, we are the sender. And since we have a blank role, that means it's a different customer every time, we'll have to input their information every time it goes out. So if we sent to them before, we could type in their name or their email here on the search bar and they will come up. If this is our first time sending a document to them, we are going to click add new and add their details. First name, last name, email, click add. In this case, just for testing, so we can see this as a recipient's point of view, and we do recommend our users when they're testing to send these out to themselves first, so they can see this, how, how it works and how their customer are going to actually see their documents. So I'm going to click add me here. So in this case, I'll be the sender and I will also be the recipient, the customer. We have the ability for a signing sequence. Right now it's set to no, but we can enable this to yes. So for example, if we have three people signing the same document or template, party number two cannot sign until party number one has done it, and party number three cannot sign until party number two has done it. We also have a great feature of in-person signing. Basically, if you have people coming over into your office or you have a recipient who doesn't have access to a computer or email, you can have in-person signing, but any device with internet and a browser can access Foxit eSign for signing, such as smartphones, tablets, PCs, and so forth. Here we have different authentication levels as well. Uh, this is basically for more security. The default one is no authentication, but this is still legally binding. But for example, we have SMS document link. This will send a text message to your recipient on their phone and they can click on that link and it will take them directly into the document to sign. This is for a small but minimal fee. You can buy SMS under our billing tab as well as the two-factor authentication as well. We do have KBA also on top of our enterprise plan. And we do also have a user defined access code with our enterprise plan as well. So I'll go ahead and leave this no authentication for now. And we're going to go ahead and click next. Awesome, so this is the uh, very last step, uh, review and sent here. So this here is a generic email template that we give you. Um, here you can edit this message here by clicking editor view. And as soon as we click send now, your recipient is going to receive a notification to their email. And a, a, with this message here, basically letting them know, hey, Daniel has sent you a new Fox and eSign envelope called test. Please click on view document and sign as required. You can customize this message as a one-time send. Or you can make as many email templates like this on our settings tab, you can save them. And once you come to the third review and send step, you can select your different email templates you made. Awesome. So if you, need, if you don't need to edit this and this is ready for sending, we are going to just go ahead and click send now. Great, so this has been sent to our recipient. And um, since we are the recipient, Fox and eSign noticed that I have an account with them and I was just logged in. So it takes me right away into the document to sign. However, I do receive a notification to my email, letting me know I have a document for me to sign. But here in this case, in my case, it took me right into the document to sign. So what we're seeing here is our recipient's point of view. Um, here, our name is pre-populated as we can see. So we have a contract start date that they could choose from. We have our two check boxes, one for yes, another one for no, and I can only choose either or. Our service details. Our client has three different ways of signing. They can either type their name 
and choose a font. These are all legally binding. Draw their signature or choose an image, for example. Some people like to upload a picture of their signature. I'm going to type my name and click sign. As you can see, this data is pre-populated and we're going to click finish and this is done. So this is now a fully executed document and legally binding. It's also stored securely on Fox's e-sign servers and each party assigned will receive a copy to their email as well. So this is what we'll get back. And um, here at the bottom, if we scroll back uh, to the bottom, we have a certificate with an audit trail IP location. Let you know this is fully legally binding and court admissible. We can go ahead and save this document now into our Google Drive. We can save it into our Dropbox. Also, if we click more actions at the top right, we can go ahead and download PDF, for example, into our computer or our phone and different cool things that we could do here. Great, so this is about this is about it. This is how you send out your template and receive it back. So here we have our template. If I go back to my templates tab, here is the template we just created and all the work it's already there. So if I just need to resend it again, I just click send again on the top right. Click next, add my recipient here and send it out again, very easy. That's about it for today, guys. Thanks for joining. Have a great day.